So today's um, video is going to be about buckling analysis um, using ANSYS. Um, the main reason I kind of wanted to make this video is when I was doing a project at work, I couldn't actually find enough information online about um, external pressure vessels um, and how to conduct um, FEA analysis on them using ANSYS. So this video is going to fill that gap hopefully in YouTube. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And if, and if I actually have missed out anything or if I've said something wrong, please do correct me. Um, this is just the knowledge that I've gained over the past few weeks um, using the software, uh, doing the research on buckling analysis itself. Um, so yeah, please feel free to, to comment uh, below. So let's just make a start. I know there's loads of um, models over here, but we're gonna look at two in particular. Um, we're mainly gonna be doing a linear uh, analysis um, on buckling. We probably can do a non-linear analysis in the future, but for this video, it's just gonna be a linear um, eigenvalue buckling analysis that's gonna be carried out. Um, I have equations uh, for so the, the way I conducted this, actually, I, I did theoretical uh, calculations first, um, calculated my wall thickness for my pressure vessel, and then um, then I calculated the wall thickness for my head. So there's different types of heads you can choose, hemispherical, elliptical, um, flat-headed, and so on. So um, this analysis over here is going to show you a flat-headed model and an um, elliptical model as well. So let's just make a start. Let's go through the, the model itself, uh, look at different aspects of it. So let's firstly open up the elliptical model first. Uh, let's go to the geometry here. You can, if you drop this menu in here, um, you can pick uh, the material that you want for your pressure vessel. So I've picked an aluminum alloy for it, um, and then I've got two components inside it which are made of structural steel. So specify your materials within this section over here, and then we can move on to our um, <clears throat> meshing. So as I have a student license for ANSYS, I can only go so far with my uh, the number of elements that I can have. So this is maxed out for st static structural model. Um, it goes up to, I'm not sure the exact number, it might be 25,000 or something like that, 24,000. But um, I've used a face mesh on the pressure vessel itself and I've got my total nodes of 20,828 and my elements of 8,603. So just use a face uh, mesh along um, the pressure vessel itself. Then we move on to our static structural um, element. So I've applied two loads on here. Um, sorry, one load and one support. So the first pressure I've, I've um, applied is um, around the pressure vessel itself because this is going to be submerged down to a depth of 6,000 meters. Um, so I wanted to, to um, kind of simulate that. So what I've done here is put a pressure um, load on here on, on the pressure vessel and I've put a magnitude of 60 megapascals. The reason I put it to 60 is because um, when you do your calculations you find that the pressure at 6,000 meters uh, is around 60 megapascals. So that is the reason I put that there. And then if you go to your fixed support, uh, the locations of my fixed supports are on the, the actual supports of the pressure vessels itself over here. So those are my two fixed supports, keeps the model uh, constrained. Then we move on to our total deformation. So you go solutions, you right click, insert, and you put deformation in total. So I've spe specified all the bodies and this is the result I get. So the main um, uh, deformation that occurs is actually in the head itself. And I've got um, a deflection of 1.47 millimeters. This is for a pressure vessel thickness of 20 mil um, I've gone with. Uh, so if I just show you the section view. Da -da -da. So if you see over here, let's go to the side. So yeah, that's that's the main deflection I get within my model. Um, I know the mesh isn't the best because that's as far as I can go. If I had a better mesh, you could probably get a different analysis and probably a more accurate model, but this is as much as I can do so far. Um, Another reason this uh, pressure vessel holds its shape from buckling is because it has two internal components over here that actually limit uh, it caving in itself. So the main uh, buck, uh, the deformation actually will come from the head itself. So 1.47 millimeters doesn't seem like a lot, um, but for pressure vessels design, it can be cat uh, very catastrophic. Um, 
So that was my true scale. If we go into an auto scale, you can see uh, how much it deflects within this region. So it just exaggerates the deformation a bit more, but really this is your true um, deformation here. One problem I've been having, and someone in the comment section can help me, is understanding eigenvalue buckling analysis itself. Eigenvalue bu buckling analysis, I can't um, go ahead with it uh, with um, the current model uh, with the supports. But if you were to take these supports off and, and just carry out the, the, the eigenvalue buckling analysis, it runs perfect. So I'm going to show you one of those models. Over here. So if we go to just the, so this is just pressure vessel I've got. Um, we'll probably take the section off actually. And if we go to our eigenvac uh, value um, buckling analysis over here, you can see the different deformations that occur. Uh, so these are different modes, um, and the way you actually specify. It. So let me go through the buckling analysis itself. The way you actually apply the buckling analysis is you drop one of these eigenvalue buckling onto your your solution. So that's the reason this has popped up over here and it connects it with those three lines over here. And once you open the model, you'll see the eigenvalue buckling part over here and you don't really have to do anything. It will already create the solution. All you have to do is insert uh, deformation total and then run the simulation and you'll get this. If you want different uh, number of modes, then this is where you change it. So you go into analysis settings, you can change the number of modes you want to find. So it's just the way, it, uh, different ways that it can def, um, deform, right? Um, so let me just show you a front on view. So let's look at the first one. So you go in total deformation. So let's have a look at the differences. So you run it. See how there's only one mode so far, it only deflects in one uh, region. If we change that to two, you'll see the difference over there. It will change shape. Yep, there we go, it goes the other side. Then if we look at our third one, you should have three different modes over here now. There we go, right? And then we have our four, which should just change shape again. There we go, and last but not least, we have number five. And I'll explain these in a bit more detail. There we go. So these are all your different uh, modes that it can fail in. So the next important part you actually want to look at is actually your load multipliers here. So this is a wall thickness of 25 mil, if I'm correct. Um, and yeah, 25 mil. And what these load multipliers pretty much mean is that the load that you've applied on here, which is 60 megapascal, it can, this load multiplier here pretty much just means that it can take a load 11 times or 11.9 times more than the load that you've applied due to this thickness that you applied here. Um, so that's quite a bit. So that means you can uh, reduce the thickness and, and run it again and see what result you get. Um, for this particular model, I actually applied uh, internal pressure as well because this uh, pressure vessel will be uh, will have an atmospheric temperature on the inside. So hence the reason for that. Um, and that's it. Eigenvalue buckling analysis doesn't really go into much more detail. This The load multiplier is re really the most important thing that you want to look at. Uh, for different modes, it can it can take a higher load and so on. Um, yeah, if I've missed something out, please let me know. Um, I, I do want to work on the software a bit more and, and understand it a bit better. So next I'm going to show you is uh, my flat-headed um, pressure vessel. So I went with the two designs, elliptical and flat-headed. Um, in the end, I found that the flat-headed uh, model actually was better for maintainability and also manufacturing as well. Um, it doesn't require any um, cylindricity or anything like that. So, uh, oh, is this still the wrong one? Yeah, still the wrong one here. Let me go to the next one. Where is it? This one here. <coughs> I 
there we go okay so um, what we have over here is my flathead vessel so let me just show you that before now uh, let me do a section view of it as well there we go same as before um, you've got two components on the inside uh, that are housed my pressure vessel on the outside over here uh, bolts holding in place um, and let's just look into the the deformation itself so the two displacements added for these are on either side um, the first displacement can, is, has all zeros on either side so it's, it can move freely um, well sorry it's fixed and the second one sorry it's move it's uh, fixed in the um, y and z direction and it's allowed to move in the x direction so it's allowed to move this way so let's look at uh, for the t total deformation then. In this case, you can see that the total deformation occurs um, along this region here, which you would expect, right? That's the, the re region. So we're gonna look at the uh, flathead model now. And um, so we have the bolts placed into the, the flathead itself and the, the bolt in right into your pressure vessel itself. Um, so I fixed the model in uh, one of the heads and I let it move another so what you can see here is the total deformation of the the model so the total deformation occurs the max total deformation I should say occurs within the actual outer regions within the bolt itself um, so the bolts take a lot of the the deformation itself so we need to uh, pay a bit of attention within how we structure the bolts and what, what thickness we have for the bolts as well um, and your deformation tends to lessen as we get to the center um, because there has some ri there's rigidity within the model uh, due to the internal components as well. So I have two internal components over here. Then we have our uh, equivalent stress on the model. As you can see, it isn't a properly messed uh, model due to the license limit. So therefore, we can't really go into too much detail here. Um, yeah, if it was messed, uh, messed a bit better, we could have got better results. So same again, what we can see with the bolts, there's quite a lot of deformation on the bolt over here. So we need to make sure that these stresses don't go above the actual bolt yield strength, uh, the material yield strength of the bolt. Um, same again with the head, as I was saying, the deformation, deformation occurs um, at the outer regions. And um, another thing we looked at into was the the temperature of the, the model itself. So. Um, we looked at the heat flux within the model as well. Um, so as you can see over here, um, and maybe that's another video I, I, we can go into uh, about um, temperature, um, how the temperature moves through through material and how we can determine um, if the model uh, dissipates heat. So what we really want is, um, we want the, the pressure vessel itself to have a really good heat conductivity, the material itself to have a good heat conductivity so that it can dissipate the heat from inside uh, the pressure vessels itself to the surroundings. So the surroundings uh, in, in, um, at 6,000 meters would be around four degrees Celsius. So the temperature difference from the inter inter internals to the out external, um, yeah, we really want that to have a really good heat, uh, thermal conductivity for this material so that we can dissipate the heat as much as possible. So um, that probably concludes the video. Um, as I said, if I've missed something out or I haven't explained something properly, please leave it in the comments below. Um, and yeah, thank you very much.